This is Spiritual Biz Chat with Kimberly Masca. Inspiration for spiritual entrepreneurs. Join our spiritual family at spiritualbizmagazine.com. Welcome everybody. I'm Kimberly Masca, your host of Spiritual Biz Chat for Spiritual Biz Magazine. And today I'm truly honored to be having with us and on our cover, Edwin Gaines. She is one of the leaders in helping shift our consciousness about abundance, letting us all know that we can all be prosperous no matter what. So Edwin, thank you so much for doing your work and being here with me. Oh, I'm so grateful. This sounds like so much fun. We're going to have a blast. So tell me how you started your journey in the whole prosperity world and being able to teach this. What was your story for those that don't know? The main issue that bothered me most of my life was poverty because I was working two jobs, 16 hours a day, just getting by, putting up with, making ends meet. That's a typical story that you hear. And I decided uh, that there had to be a better way to live. And so I began researching and, you know, little by little, I, I finally started my first business with a $2.75 classified ad and my phone rang off the wall and I thought, oh my God, this is, this is different. This is fun. And I got, I got to do a job that I didn't know I could do. And every time I got a request, they asked me, could you do this? I said, yes. And then I learned how to do it. It was really fun. So then I opened a second business and then, you know, I began studying in depth the, the what I call the spiritual laws of prosperity. And uh, my life has been one grand adventure after the next. And uh, I'm really loving it. I love this this teaching. And when we come into alignment with it, uh, things happen. And, and, and they seem like coincidences, but we both know there's no such thing. No, that is true. It's beautiful when it lines up. So what do you think is the biggest thing that holds people back when it comes to creating that abundance in their lives? I really think it's probably fear because there seems to be in the human soul uh, a fear of the unknown. And, you know, that there's an old saying, better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. And so it takes a, a, a little bit of courage to step outside your comfort zone and to, to learn something new, to do something different, to, to take a chance. To me, it came down to desperation because life was so miserable. I knew there's something I'm missing. So I began to study all the books in the library. They had any money to buy books, but I would go and read all the positive thinking books I could find and got addicted to Catherine Ponder, uh, who's been my teacher for many years, and Charles Fillmore in Unity, and some of the religious science writers like Ernest Holmes. And I really found a way that made sense to my soul. And I began doing these things. And I wrote a book called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity, A Simple Guide to Unlimited Abundance. And in that book, I I sort of tell my story of moving through my fear, my limiting belief, and taking at first baby steps. Uh, But I know now that um, we're destined. It is is our honor, our inheritance to be uh, wealthy. And that means not just in money, but in health and vitality and energy and friendships and relationships and and just every part of your life begin to work. And when we do these four things that I mentioned as the four laws of prosperity, that's a jumping off point for really becoming the light, the love, the power that we really are. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I know we all have these fears around money for whatever reason, but I find that the spiritual entrepreneurs, and I love that you wrote the book about the spiritual laws of abundance, is that spiritual entrepreneurs get very skittish when it comes to money and they have a hard time doing that energy exchange of their gift for money. Let's talk about that a little bit. Let me share your thoughts. That was my hardest step when I began to do the work that I do uh, primarily on a love offering basis. Uh, But for my retreats, I set a certain fee that's low enough so that anyone could do it at least once a year if they wanted to. And then I I received a love offering or just an offering of appreciation after the event. And I came to know that my work is not my source, that there's a higher power that's moving through me. So I'm, I just don't worry about money anymore. But I used to a lot, but I have no debt. Uh, my retreats are very successful. Uh, I have more invitations to speak than, than I want to handle. And uh, I keep having what the world would call miracles happen in my life. It came to me these this feeling of, of great 
peace and satisfaction and joy came after many years of just stepping outside my comfort zone one more time and doing the next right thing and um, doing a lot of forgiveness work, uh, keeping on purpose, not letting my ego get diverted to other things that I might do because I really want to do what I'm doing, which is teaching prosperity. So if someone is in that fear of doing that energy exchange, they're out there giving their gift away for free and they're out of balance. What would you give them as a bit of advice about that? Well, the first time that I confronted that, I wanted to start teaching people how to teach prosperity. So I started a, a retreat called the Master Prosperity Teacher Training. And I didn't want people who were coming just to have a good time for the weekend. I want people who were on purpose. So I wanted to set a fee uh, that I thought was fair and that I thought would challenge them enough. So I, I just prayed and prayed and prayed about it. And so what I got was I, would, I started out at $1,000 and I got no. So I went to 1100 No. What about... 1295 no finally got up to 1795 and I got a yes and it scared me to ask for that much money you know oh my god they're thinking crazy and every year it was a full the, the enrollment was full but it was really learning to check within going within and, and asking that I call them our higher self whatever that is it knows what to do. And all we have to do is learn to ask the right questions. It's funny. I had a client just talking about that today. She kept working on her pricing and she was like, no, no. Amazingly, she hit the 4,000 number. She got a very clear yes to bring in those amazing clients. Wonderful. I love that. That's amazing. And you know, if we if we have the courage, because most people devalue themselves and devalue the information they have to share, but my faith in myself did not come immediately. It came over time. And I think when I opened that business, the first client that I got gave me a $500 retainer, and I should have asked for thousands, you know, because I was doing a grand opening for a great big hospital, but I didn't know any better. And they were very pleased. They got a, they got a really nice job done for a little bit of money. But for me, 500 was a lot of money. <laughs> so we start where we are. Yeah. But start. That's the key. You have to start. <laughs> have to actually begin the process. When you're testing things out now, because you have a very successful business and, and clients come from all over the world, I know, to work with you. So what do you see is the biggest takeaway as they're leaving their time with you? I know you do these beautiful retreats. What is the biggest aha for them that they're seeing and leaving with? I think they're all very, very different uh, because I have people who come over and over and over and every time they get something new. Uh, but primarily my, my job is to, to wake people up to their own divinity, their own holiness, their own integrity, their own gifts. My goal is to see the face of God on every face I see. So when I see someone and I really encourage them and I give them real honest feedback and build up their willingness to take some chances, uh, you can see a shift in them and they begin to move from one new project to the next and bigger and bigger. And I have some people who are doing amazing things because they were willing to step outside their comfort zone and to believe in themselves and willing to fail. Yeah. Willing to fail. You have to take a risk and, when you take a risk, there's a willingness to fail. But surprisingly, we don't fail very often. <laughs> it's just one big lesson, right? And I always say when I have these failures, it's like the universe asking me, how bad do you want it? Yes, yes. That's one of the things I teach. And when you set your intention to come to a retreat, and maybe you're a little scared because you don't know what it's going to be about, there's a Russian metaphysician called Uspensky who says, what happens when you set your attention to be, to do something new or to be something bigger than you've been? There comes something called second force. And it says, do you mean this? Are you really sure you mean this? And that's when we have to step, yes, I do. And I'm doing it. Yeah. You know the feeling. And it's taking that leap, like you said, that, that making that decision to move forward and people get so stuck not making the decision. And I love how you said that you're really just showing people how to connect with their divine selves. And that somehow I think people miss the idea that your divine self is wealthy 
And so they make this disconnect. So how do you bring that together for people? Well, I am a minister, so I use a lot of Bible. There's a lot of Bible I don't understand. So you don't ask me questions about some of the hard stuff. But the simple things, it over and over, it says God provides. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And ask. And the scriptures say, we have not because we ask not. When I started my business, I asked God about every move. What do I do here? What do I do here? What do I? And I followed that, even though it scared the be Jesus out of me. I did it anyway. And amazing things began to happen. But it's learning to trust your inner guidance system that is so powerful. That that higher holy self that really wants you to have all that your heart desires. The whole notion uh, is that we're moving in evolutionary steps toward really being that light that we've come to be. And God wants us to have everything we want. A lot of religion has taught poverty is a virtue. It's really not. Poverty is a sin. Sin simply means missing the mark of perfection. So if you're not as wealthy as you want to be, it's because there's some thought or some feeling that you're letting uh, yourself be held back by. And so it's good to do some prayers and meditation to go within and to find that place in you that says, I'm bigger than this. We can do this. And uh, not let the ego say, the ego loves the status quo. Don't do it. You're probably going to fail. You know, it's like your old grandmother or somebody saying, no, 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 who do you think you are? Well, I think that I am beloved of God and I can do anything I choose. That is so beautiful. If everyone can stand in that moment of that connection and just know that we're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be tapping into that divine. We're supposed to be wealthy in so many ways. I love how we're trying to do this consciousness shift. And so I'm so honored to be speaking with you and being able to get people to see that shift. And I love the part that since you are a minister, bringing in the Bible, because I get that where people will like, they'll come at me with the quotes from the Bible. And it's like, but Jesus was one of the wealthiest people. <laughs> he, had, he taught abundance. He didn't even carry a wallet. <laughs> I love it. I just want to mention what I call the four spiritual laws. I believe in tithing. One tenth of all belongs to where that per where you've received your spiritual food. Tithing on a regular and disciplined basis, not just when it feels good. And then forgiveness. We've got to do our forgiveness work every single day. Every single day, there's somebody who does something that I don't like. So I have to spend time really saying, okay, your control issues are showing again. So go back and forgive yourself and forgive them. And then you have to set goals. You have to really say what it is that you want. And then finally, you have to get on purpose with your life. What are you here for? What do you, what do you want to accomplish? What is your big goal? And whatever it is, God's got bigger things than that for you. So just start where you are and begin. That's beautiful. And I love it. You and I are on the same page with tithing. And I talk about it all the time. People think it's some old fashioned thing. And so I'm trying to also, with your message as well, bring this forward that people have to understand it. When you give that 10%, and especially when you're in scarcity, that's when you should be giving that 10%. Exactly. And I had people who come to me and says, you know, I, I was tithing last year. I did really, really well. And then I had a, you know, I need to have the house painted so I didn't tithe. And stuff started happening that wasn't right. I said, see, the universe is not doing this to you. You're doing it to yourself. <laughs> That's so true. We are in control of that. We are in complete control of what that looks like. I think we could probably talk about this all day, but I like to keep it where people are getting just what they need to hear so that they get that they are, they are divine, we are abundant. That is what we're here to do and to be able to spread that abundance to help. Is there any other little tidbit you'd love to leave them with so that they can take it home and start to practice? The thing that I want people to know more than anything else is that you are loved. You're loved with a love that you can't even begin to imagine and you're watched over and you cannot fail. So get out there and just start taking some steps and seeing what life is really like when you live it full out in technicolor. Thank you so much for just taking this time to chat. And if people want to find you, because your retreats I've heard are amazing. A few of my friends and clients have gone. I'm going to put that on my to-do list over the next year. And so where can they find you so they can get more information about your abundance retreats? Well, my webpage is prosperityproducts.com. 
And that is a listing of the retreats and the workshops and the products that I have. And uh, you can email us to get on our email list from the webpage. And uh, I would love to hear from people. And I would like to tell the people who are are in my little uh, realm uh, about this program. Thank you so much. And I really hope everyone who's watching this take the moment to hear what we said, to know that you are in connection with your divine source at all times. You just have to be open to receive and that you are meant to be abundant and wealthy in every way, shape, and form. So I will see you on the next chat. And thank you so much, Edwin, for being with us. You've been listening to Spiritual Biz Chat with Kimberly Masca. Inspiration for spiritual entrepreneurs. Hear our latest interviews and join our spiritual family at spiritualbizmagazine.com.